they don't actually support collection of binaries. They only support collection of text within the raw file itself. And so you'll find that you know, your CSS files and so forth uh, all have all of their content, but the images and so forth are all just zero bytes. But you can still see the headers, which in many cases is really all that you need uh, in order to debug successfully. So, okay, now we've got traffic coming into Fiddler directly. We've got import of traffic out of either Fiddler Cap or the IE9 developer tools. What do you do with that traffic? Where do you go from there? And so the first thing I wanted to talk about is filtration of traffic. And filtration of traffic is pretty important because very often you get a lot of traffic which is entirely extraneous. It's not interesting to what you're trying to accomplish. And so to that end, Fiddler has the ability to very quickly filter through traffic and make sure that you're only seeing the kinds of things that you want. Uh, I would say, however, that this is also one of the most confused things about Fiddler because very often people will, will write in and they say, Fiddler doesn't capture anything. And the reason is, is that Fiddler has been set to filter all of their traffic so they only see certain traffic and they're not using whatever they, they set the filters to. So there's a, a, quite a few filters. The first thing, the simplest filter, is down here on the bottom. And that allows you to filter between non-browser traffic, hide all traffic, show traffic from all processes, or show traffic only from web browsers. You'll find that if you set it to all processes, you'll see all kinds of background traffic as WinHTTP does OCSP verification and so forth. And uh, for the purposes of a demo, I don't want my session list full of you know, random RSS feed sync and so forth. So I'm going to filter my traffic just to web browsers. Uh, a recent feature is the ability to filter down to a specific process. So if you only want to see traffic from a particular process, so in this case, you know, the IE, uh, the, the IE preview build, you can actually just drag the dropper icon and drop it on that process and say, basically, hey, I only want to see traffic from IE preview, which in this case is process 3230. And so subsequent to that, uh, basically, if I were to go start, you know, Internet Explorer, and go off to you know, some other site, so uh, you know, this, this build here, we've actually filtered all the traffic. And so it's just not being rendered inside Fiddler. It's actually still going through Fiddler. So any rules that you have that might be changing traffic and so forth will apply, but it's not rendered. And so this is very useful if you want to scope back, oh, I'm only interested in this tab, but I've got MSDN or something else open in another tab. To clear that filter, just right click on it, and uh, it, it will clear out. For a more advanced filter, we have the Filters tab. And so Filters tab is basically allows you to do a very rich set of uh, things. So you can filter based on, oh, I only want to see intranet hosts or internet hosts. You know, I only want to see a, a fixed list of hosts. I can specify a specific process out of all the processes on my system and so forth. Um, or I can filter down to only see traffic you know, that contains a particular URL and so forth. And so this allows you to very quickly filter down, I only want to see a certain set of things. In this case, I said, hey, ignore everything smaller than 7 KB. I'm only looking for large files. Uh, and there's also some lightweight modifications you can do. For instance, you can block download of script files or image files and so forth. And so that's, that saves you the, uh, the, the trouble of using some of the more complicated systems. There's also some just baked in rules. And the rules are implemented by Fiddler script. And we'll talk about what that is shortly. But the, the first and most common one that people want to use is just hide image requests. They don't want to see the images because they're not useful. They're debugging ASPX. They don't really need to know anything about the images. And then also hide the HTTPS connects. So when you do a, a connection to an HTTPS site through a proxy, it creates what's called a connect tunnel. And unless you happen to be de debugging that feature, it's not terribly useful for you to see those. And so you can set those uh, to, to allow you to filter that traffic out. The next thing I wanted to talk about is what's called the quick exec box. And the quick exec box comes from my obsession with sort of command line utilities and the ability to use a command line uh, in, in modern tools. And so I'm going to quickly load up a set of traffic that I've captured previously. So. Uh, I think this is the Mandalay, Bap, Mandalay Bay uh, map site. And so Mandalay Bay map site has you know, all kinds of images and so forth. And you know, maybe I'm only interested in, for instance, uh, how much CSS was, was found here. And so the quick way to do this is basically you can, in the quick exec box, you can type select CSS. And it'll actually do a filtration. Let me hide uh, Slicker in really quickly. It'll hide. It'll do a filtration to actually select uh, anything that has the content type uh, text CSS. So let me do that. And so here I've collected all the all the things that are content type of uh, text CSS in the in the response, and or in this case actually text. I think I filtered out this. The, I just did text, and so this is going to be the things that start with text. And so you can actually filter down to a set of things. Uh, if you wanted to see only images, for instance, you could type all but, and I think all but image, and it's going to filter down and remove everything from the session list that's not an image. And so you can do this for ASPX or HTML or any other kind of file type that you want. And so you can actually write your own. 
um, there's, there's, these are all built into the Fiddler script engine, and so you can create your own filters. By default, there's a set of filters that are built in. If you type help, you'll go out to the documentation for Fiddler, and you can see like, hey, you know, only contain things, only select things that, that have some text in the URL, or if the size is greater or less than something else, or if, if the response status has a particular status, and so forth. And these uh, you can just very quickly use to filter down the set of traffic that you're looking at, which is, again, very useful because there's, there's so, ma so many different sessions that you'll see. And the last thing I wanted to mention is find. And find is very useful because it does a very deep find of the traffic. And so if you hit Control F or use the context menu, uh, you can find any string that's going to appear anywhere. So in this case, maybe I, I want to see, um, you know, maybe we'll search for the word Microsoft. If I can type it correctly. And you have the option of, I only want to search in requests or I want to search in responses and so forth. You can search in the headers or the body only. And you can decode compressed content. And so this is very useful because as a, as a proxy, Fiddler will see content that's you know, in its format on the wire. So if it's gzip compressed, it'll see the gzip compressed stuff. And you know, you're not going to find any meaningful plain text strings in gzip, for instance. And so you can actually have it de uh, search that. If you want to search inside you know, a binary file format, uh, you can do that. So this is useful if you're looking for a string in a Swift file that hasn't been compressed and so forth. Uh, and there's a bunch of diff different options for that. And so basically, you can very quickly find all all of the things that happen to contain the string Microsoft, if that's useful to you. We use this a bunch when we're trying to figure out, you know, oh, hey, this site doesn't work, and it, it sounds like it's that one bug where they call this method on this property, and you know, so forth. And uh, you can just very quickly say, okay, load up the site, and then search all of the sites, all of the sites, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, and see whether or not they're using the affected thing. And we actually built some automated crawler tools that will actually do this. So as, uh, th there's a guy on our team that's really good at this, and he's just got a set of things that sort of flag interesting content. So if somebody says the site is broken, he just kind of like opens it up and Fiddler says, yep, it's that problem that we knew about. The other thing about Fiddler is, is it's not sort of a one-way street. Fiddler allows export, and export is very useful if you want to sort of communicate things to other people. Uh, the first thing is, is that you can just copy sessions to, to the clipboard. So you can just right-click and choose copy, and you can copy just the headers, you can copy the URL, you can copy the full thing. It'll put it on the clipboard in two formats. It'll put it on in plain text and in HTML. So if you paste in like Outlook or an HTML editor or whatever, you get sort of a pretty printed view of the headers and the responses and so forth. You can store things in a plain text file if you want. You can extract the binary response bodies and drop them all to disk. So you know, one, of the, one of the plugins is basically an image gallery where you surf around, and then you can just drop all of the image files that you've seen in your, in your session on the, the hard drive. Uh, people have written things that export out to a database. So